just pulling home our corn stock special baler. The premier brand new vet. Is that a whistle? How you doing? Oh wait, that's Zap. Oh, now I feel uncomfortable. So Zach just wanted to give me a hard time because uh, my new paint and everything. Uh, I do like my AT4 better in his truck. Don't worry. This time I put the fire extinguisher on the baler. If you're new to the channel, you'll have to watch an earlier video to see uh, why it's probably a good idea if I put the fire extinguisher on the baler. We have been getting a lot of rain lately. If you can see by my tracks, it's a muddy mess out there. Problem is this hay has been rained on multiple times. I'm tired of it. It's almost to the point of it's going to be bad hay to bale. I need to get it in round bales as quickly as possible. The big issue with that is, I think we're going to tear up the field. This mud just never stops. I mean, it's even muddy and gooey on these gravel roads. If you don't know, we're trying to pick up the dry hay. Some of that's still wet. I have no idea why it's still wet. It's been rained on a few times. This isn't going to be great hay. This is all the hay we got. So we just got to uh, live with it. All right, now that we're home, now comes the tough decision. What tractor do we want to put on there? Uh, so we got the 4620, we got the 1086, still got, I think, a problem with the electrical because of the fire. We got the 4455, hmm. and we got the white. I know, it's case right. Some people get mad when I say that. It is a white tractor, it's just a case. Uh, yep, that's it. I think you're up. And primarily you're up just because you're not hooked to something else. I'm hoping beans this tractor has the duels on it that it won't leave such a mess in the field but I think it's kind of unlikely. I got this thing backed up here and change of plans. I don't know if this is the right call or not but I think I'm going to remove the duels off this tractor and yeah and uh, then hook it up. Just because I'm afraid about, just because it's muddy, I don't want to have extra tires. So the duels, uh, well, I'm trying not to tear up as, as little as grass as possible. Let's just say that. I really hope I don't regret taking the duels off because it, it's too sloppy out there. Sloppy. I might have to put them back on and that's going to kill a lot of time. I mean, look at my tracks going up the road. That's just uh, terrible. Who left that tractor there? So we still have our rental tractor here from Midwest Machinery. I'm going to have to move this to the side of the road. Maybe I'll take it up there to the yard. Uh, I, I think I'll back it up the driveway, actually. Come on, old girl. 4840. She's cold blooded. Come on. There you go. Even out. Yeah, she fights it all the way. Back this old this thing worked like a champ. Oh, yeah. Just look at that. All that nastiness we're causing. Yeah, put it up in the rocks. Back it up here. I like how this uh, 4840 looks, so keeping it out in the front so everyone can see. All right, turn this old girl on. So we got applicator there. That's what's going in there. Just because this uh, hay has been rained on and it's so sloppy underneath, I don't want this uh, burning down the hay pile. Let's put that on. It's just a little preventative. You could bail a little bit wetter with that. It's actually not as sloppy once you're on the grass. So I think the grass roots and everything is kind of keeping you stable. If that makes any sense at all. At least we aren't 
making tracks in the hayfield. No one likes to make tracks in the hayfield. So this baler actually kicks the bale sideways. I'll try to show you on our next bale. So we're coming up almost to the end. See how this works? Nice. So that way, if you are bailing downhill or whatever, for whatever reason, your bale don't roll away on you. Now I know I've been round bailing for a few times and let me tell you especially what it always seems to happen uh, usually hilly ground or is what most people like using as their hay field just because it's harder for harvesters and all that to harvest or maybe it's just a small field where they just hay the grass or the alfalfa and uh, the problem with that is usually them type of fields around like a force which, if you ever found a runaway bale down a forest, uh, some of them forests are kind of dense. But the bale can make it through. Your retrieval tractor can. So there's been a few times where I've had to go get a big log chains time on the bale and yank the bale out of these uh, forests so I can get to it and actually load the bale. I'm sure a lot of you have had stories, something similar to that. So if you guys are interested in this baler, you can find it at Angry American Modi. Facebook site, click on the link, download it. Uh, this is by far one of the best Vermeer balers out there after uh, Buck baler that I've been using for a while. I've always liked the Vermeer round balers just because, oh, oh, I guess I put that bale in the wrong location. It's alright to have a kick side only when you're not, your uh, roll isn't so close to your, yeah, that, I might have to uh, back up right when this is going. The best thing about this is, especially if you're going up and down, really pick up the bales easy if you are uh, spearing them this way. Really glad we're floating so good on top of this hay field because uh, if we were making tracks, uh, we gotta go around a bale here. here. Easy, easy does it. Yeah, yeah, don't wanna hit my new baler there. Because if when you make tracks in the hay field, them get to be awful bumpy. And uh, that's definitely not what you want to do when you're trying to bail bales and your uh, forehead is getting uh, hit on top of the cap. That's why I ended up taking the canopy off so my uh, I don't smash my head on top of the cap. But enough of me talking. I think you all deserve a little montage, don't you think? of dry stuff here. I just realized while I'm bailing around here. I might have made a mistake. I think you're supposed to go the opposite direction so it kicks it out away from the wind rows. But you haven't bailed already. Yeah, that probably would have been a smart idea. Whoops. Oops, stay on the row. Stay on the row. I'm all, all, all over the place here. We are on our last little dry, dry windrow, I guess. So this was swapped a little bit before that, just for the fact that uh, we tried to burn uh, Zach's place down over there. And uh, I'm kind of surprised because the 
and uh, Moco, the John Deere Moco, really spread that hay out. This was uh, more of the old-fashioned uh, put in the uh, tight low roll. It is what it is. And it looks like I'm going to get some wet stuff in there. Good thing I'm treating it. This is going to be my last round I do here. Then I got to feed some of the cattle because they've been balling and keeping me up all night long. Yeah, going around that way was not a smart decision, but you know what they call me, fart smeller, I mean, smart feller. Alright, we are done. I'm gonna park this up by the yard. Oh, uh, yep, yeah, getting a little sloppy already. Gotta stay on the rocks as much as possible. Otherwise, it's gonna get the slap on us. Alright, back this up into our garage here, our shop. This is probably, the baler is probably one of the more expensive items on this farm. Right now at least. It's my only new item on this farm, to be honest. Alright, gonna get an old square body here. Pick up a few bales for these old cattle. Stop the belly aching. Get this ready to go there. There we go. Alright, I'm gonna take off the bales that uh, are pretty close to the other old Linrows, or actually even sitting on the old Linrow. Oh, didn't really hold that one very good. Oh, 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 you stay there. Put these back in until we get to our other bale. Go around here, I think they're, oh, oh man. Yeah, see, that's why you don't want tracks in your uh, grass field. Get the bouncy. Get as close, and then we'll de-spear it. Lift it. And we're good. Well, thank you all for watching. I will see you next time over here in Minnesota. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and share, and subscribe. So I get asked all the time, Steve-O, where do you get all your mods? A lot of the mods I have aren't private, they are public, so you can find a lot in the description below uh, sites I use. Uh, Mod Network is a good site, a good safe site that doesn't give you viruses and all that other stuff. A lot of the mods that you don't see usually come from uh, Facebook sites like Angry American Modding. So, Try to check them out. Make great mods. Modders do a lot for us in this community. Check them out. Make sure if you watched the video this far, just smash that like button for me. Helps me out a ton. Alright, later y'all.